everyone, and I hope you had a very good uh, Global Air Developers Day so far. And today, I'm what I'm going to show you is a machine learning simplified uh, for developers with ML.NET. I'm going to start off at the beginning with a little bit of a story to just show you that if you ever struggled with machine learning, it's fine in the right place. So I have already introduced myself. So I'm Yane Kavka. You can call me JK. Uh, this all of these socials you can follow me, um, and also um, SSW Solution Architect. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, I'll uh, give you a quick story of how I tried machine learning, failed, and then uh, succeeded give you a little bit of an overview of what machine learning is, a very simple, uh, oversimplified version, since I think I have only 25 minutes or just 20 minutes, um, and then a quick demo at the end showing you how everything came together. All right, so when I was trying to uh, build my first automated solution, I actually had a very simple goal in mind. So I tried to manage my finances. And on one hand, I had my bank transactions. And here are some of the descriptions of those bank transactions. And I want to have categories out of that because what I wanted is to know where all of my money is going. So I was thinking, okay, on one hand, we have the, uh, the descriptions. On the other hand, we have categories. So how can I bridge that gap? Now, when I was in high school, that was Excel and everything was done manually. But then when I got to uni, I learned about C Sharp. So I was just like, okay, I'll build my own rule engine. That worked about four months. Uh, until I figure out that it's actually complicated to build your own role engine that adapts to uh, new needs. So then I thought, okay, I'll go into machine learning route. Uh, there was around about 2011 to 2016, I tried different machine learning uh, things to solve my um, uh, financing problems of figuring out where the money is going, uh, in what categories. And I learned the hard way that you just don't simply learn machine learning, especially uh, a few years ago. And to better explain why that is the case is imagine you're trying to learn these machine learning uh, frameworks and what you realize it's a rabbit hole. Uh, and then they throw you some uh, different kind of um, words at you and you're trying to figure out uh, what those words mean and then you realize oh wait this is another rabbit hole and then they uh, when you're trying to learn those words there's another rabbit hole of another words and all of the sudden you spent like three weeks learning about machine learning and nothing to show off um, even worse you might learn the wrong kind of machine learning just to realize that you need to learn something completely different so like a lot of things well, time is infinite. I never seem to have enough of it. And it just becomes one of those dead projects that I thought I'll never fix. And that's kind of until ML.NET come along. And because I'm a .NET developer, I was just like, hmm, this looks intriguing. But what really hooked me is this statement without any prior machine learning experience. And that actually got me back into machine learning. I basically gave up uh, on it. And then this basically put me back into a uh, machine learning uh, course. And when I looked into ML.NET, uh, what I noticed is it was a Microsoft machine learning SDK that actually works offline. I have a nice desktop at home and it really is useful to not worry about the cost that uh, may come on the cloud. Um, you know, you just run it overnight and uh, that's it. It's simple yet powerful, like uh, all .NET SDK should be. 
uh, it's already been powered by a lot of Microsoft products. And we are now even our company starting to use ML.net and more and more uh, products. So it's really, really powerful, battle tested, and it's great. And you might not want to build your own machine learning models and ML.NET covers for that. You might have a data scientist uh, or already someone who does um, machine learning for you and you can consume TensorFlow, Onyx and some other uh, open source uh, that is available on the web. So you don't have to build your own machine learning models. And it has some awesome uh, GitHub examples. Although what we'll notice is that we might not even need to check them. We can already leverage machine learning without uh, looking at the examples. So I did actually achieve my goal and I will come back to how I got this goal shortly. But first, what is machine learning? Now, the reason why I talk about trying to figure out what machine learning is, is because a lot of developers go through all of these um, talks and courses. And in the end, they, they don't really understand what the machine learning is, or they don't have time to go into it. Just hear it's something hard and they just don't do it. So what is machine learning oversimplified? Well, the easiest way to know that is by looking at the traditional way of how we do programs. So for instance, uh, traditional programming is uh, we have rules, which could be specification, it could be a uh, data form on a website, anything that has predefined um, rules of how it should work. Then we have data. So if we have a form uh, on a website, that would be filling in uh, those, uh, that form and then pressing submit. And the classical programming then process all of that and we get an answer at the end. Now, how does th that differ from machine learning is that things are a little bit reverse. So we actually start with data and the answers for all of that data. And machine learning tries to figure out the rules for it. So it's kind of going the other way around uh, compared to classical programming. So what I mean by that is if we take rock, paper, scissor as an example, is in classical programming, we would have if rock, then paper, if paper, then scissors, if scissors, then rock, uh, which is very uh, simple logic of if the opponent uses this, then use this. Now, uh, it's not very useful uh, thinking about how can a uh, machine predict uh, what the opponent will use, but you know, it's just a good example, I think, for uh, this. In machine learning, uh, what we can do is we can actually specify in Excel or CSV, which is common, uh, common separated values uh, for a file format. We can specify a column, which is the opponent's moves. And then we can have a, another column, which is the winning combination for that opponent move. And we can then put this into machine learning algorithm and it will learn the rules for it. Now, for rock, paper, scissors, that doesn't sound too useful, like the classical programming is just three simple if statements. But what if we do rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, right? We can add a couple of more if statements and we get support for it. For instance, here, if the opponent uses lizard, we use rock. If they use Spock, use lizard. If they use scissors, now you have the additional option of Spock. But imagine what if this starts to expand to say 10 different uh, things or 100 different things or 1000 different things. Now classical programming, uh, well, classical if statements no longer work, works well. And you need to change the way you would do this with classical programming, maybe with dictionaries or graph theory or things like that. You basically need to change your application to support such a huge scale. But with machine learning, eh, you know, you can just add more examples and the machine will try to figure out the rules. No matter how many uh, cases you have, the only thing that changes really is 
that you now can uh, put more uh, different inputs into the machine learning model and you get more different outputs to it. The code doesn't actually change. All right, so we have here, um, we have uh, covered the machine learning, we have covered uh, the original story of how I got back to the machine learning. Let's go now with a demo. But before we start with the demo, um, you might have heard that data is king when it comes to machine learning. So for this example, for the uh, bank transaction classification, um, the way I prepared the data is I have a bank where a, then I used a mobile app because uh, the bank didn't have a good app uh, to do categorization of your uh, financing, which then I use to manually classify uh, all of the bank transactions for years so that before I even started this project, I was manually classifying all of the um, transactions. And then I exported them to CSV. And what I got in the CSV is something like this. Now, for, uh, for interest of time, I will probably skip most of the columns uh, just because uh, it may take a long time to explain why uh, it's good to remove some of the columns. And I'll be focusing more on how you can build a machine learning uh, model. All right, finally, demo. So what I'm going to do here, I have Visual Studio 2022. I'm going to create a new project. And what I'm going to do is just console application. And here we're going to say global AI dev days. And we're going to create this. It can be .NET 6, .NET 7, uh, that does not matter. Uh, ML.NET has a pretty wide uh, support of different uh, .NET frameworks as well as uh, .NET Core versions. All right. And the way we start here is, let me just build this. Okay, everything green. We just right click, add, and here we have machine learning model. And by the way, if you don't have that, the way you can make sure that you have it, you go to extensions, manage extensions, you go online and you can just type ml.net and, you know, and make sure that you install ml.net model builder. So let's do that again, right click on the project, add machine learning model. What I'm going to call this is bank classification. I'll add it. No apologies, I don't have the images here. Uh, you generally see images over here. I've been playing too much with preview versions and somehow the images got broken. Um, but yeah, what we have here is different kind of scenarios. So the first thing that you want to, uh, to think about when you're trying to do a machine learning uh, project is what kind of problem I'm trying to solve. So for instance, here we have data classification. That could be binary classification. So something that is between zero or one, or it's yes or no. Uh, think of it as, as a sentiment analysis. Uh, say uh, you want to figure out if a Tweet, uh, a tweet is positive or not. Um, you could also do uh, other things uh, with it, uh, as long as it goes from zero to one. You can also do a uh, multi-class classification, which means that you're actually trying to uh, discern a category, which is what we're going to actually use here. Then you have value prediction. You can imagine that for a specific uh, for a specific set of properties, say for a um, house, you could predict uh, their price. 
uh, which is a little bit di different than forecasting, where uh, forecasting is maybe how the the cost of the same house changes over time, and then trying to figure out what the cost of the house will be, rather than for these particular uh, properties of the house, this is how much it would cost. Then we have the image classification. Um, it takes your whole image and it tries to figure out what is on the image. Recommendations, uh, object detection, which can actually tell you where in the image uh, something is. And what is cool uh, about this is you can see here we have local, local, Azure local, and here we have Azure. So not all of these examples, uh, all of these actually work just in your local machine. You can actually leverage Azure, uh, especially for image classification where this data set could be uh, pretty big and it could take a long time to run this on your machine. All right, so let's go with uh, this. Now here you can see that you have local CPU and that's your only option. If you go to image classification, you have the option for uh, GPU. So some of them will support that. For our data classification case, we only have uh, CPU. Over here, you have option to go for SQL Server. Uh, I don't have the data in SQL Server, so I'm going to just use the file uh, CSV. Let's go browse. I'll go for bank transactions, unfiltered. And here we have some data. Now, one important thing to know about this data is that it's not clean. Uh, what that means is there's going to be uh, lots of duplicates. There's going to be conflicts in, uh, in the actual uh, data. So for instance, there might be that say Uber uh, is at the same time a taxi as well as food because uh, from the time this uh, data was uh, made, um, it was literally the same transaction name. So uh, it wasn't able to discern whether it was for uh, driving or for food. Now it's different. So now it would be able to do that. And the first step that you do when you have this data loaded is to select what uh, column we want to predict. And we want to predict category. Now, I believe I have a bit of time so I can play around a little, a little bit and just do the training without uh, doing any modification to the data. So now I have selected 15 seconds just because I know for this data um, it will run a couple of machine learning algorithms. And here you can see a couple of different uh, algorithms. It managed to run a couple of them and it selected the one that is the best. Now accuracy is 95%, which is very, very good, except I know that the data is not good enough uh, for that. It shouldn't be that good. And that's where it's very uh, interesting when it comes to playing around with the data. Here, it allows you to play around with uh, all different things. So for instance, I can run the first example and it will say that this is other, which I think it might be right, but let's go with Spotify and let's try to predict Spotify. So when I do Spotify, it's other but it's somewhat sure that it's also leisure. Now, the reason why this is happening is secretly, this tag over here actually um, causes us problem. So if we go to here and we look at tags, right? We're trying to predict category, but this data because of the mobile app did, uh, does not support only categories, but also tags. Um, it has tags that are directly correlated to tags. So what, no, uh, what happens is no matter what we're putting in the description, the tags is going to be the, the biggest correlation between the category and whatever data we enter. 
So in order to fix this, I can just go on the tags, ignore, save. I can retrain this. Got about four minutes, so I think we have a little bit of time to play around with data. Now, what you'll notice is the accuracy dropped by 10%, which is a pretty big uh, drop. But um, now, if we go to evaluate, I put here Spotify. And there should be no leisure. It is leisure. So what uh, this shows is that hacks, which you know you would need to know ahead of time what the transaction actually is in order to know the tag, um, basically dictated how machine learning would, le uh, would learn. So you need to be careful what kind of data you put into machine learning in order to uh, make sure that you're actually trying to predict the, the right thing in the right way. Another thing you might want to be careful is with things like amounts. Now, if you clean up your data, that's everything okay. But what you can see here, I just bumped the number uh, pretty high. And now all of a sudden it thinks it's health and uh, personal stuff. So basically it just equates anything that is a large amount. It has to be this category. What that means is, and if you think about it, the expense doesn't actually tell us always what the the category would be, it might give us a hint, but most of the time uh, it doesn't tell us actually uh, what it would be. We can just, you know, ignore, ignore. Now this currency, if if you don't have a mount, the currency doesn't really help us much. With this couple of different currencies. Now here, account is very interesting. So what this account is, is when I'm using debit card or credit card. Now, this may sound interesting to have this data point, but what does that mean is if I change from a credit card to debit card uh, for the same transaction, all of a sudden my accuracy goes down to toilet. So I don't want that. And generally speaking, when you have dates and you're trying to do uh, categorization, um, unless there's like first quarter, second quarter, or months or specific days, something that repeats over and over, it's not like incremental data, um, it's not particularly useful. So I'm going to uh, uh, ignore the dates as well because they're not particularly useful for the uh, case we have. So when I save, I train again. Now this also should uh, train faster because it has uh, far less uh, data to crunch through. Now we lost a few percentages. I think we were 86, now we're 83%. We didn't really lost too much. Now, unfortunately, the UI actually doesn't reflect that at the moment, uh, in previous versions it did. But the only thing that we now need to care about is this description. So if I try to run Spotify, it figures it's uh, leisure. And I have a couple of few things over here. So for instance, if I do American uh, Concert PT Brisbane, that's actually a coffee shop. So you can see it's food and drinks. I can then do say, this is the, the actual transaction that we're seeing, the Audible Limited Melbourne. But I can remove most of the things, have just Audible, and it still knows it's education. In fact, it's even more uh, certain of it. And when we go to consume, uh, we have a couple of different options. Now, we can create a console application, we can create a web API, or we can even play further with notebook, but it also gives us the option to just copy this, go here, and fingers crossed, I can just run this. Now let's, instead of doing this, 
let's go Spotify. I need to ask the the ml.net team why haven't they just removed all of this stuff? We don't need any of this stuff. And if we run this, what we should see is leisure. Uh, okay, why? Ah, I think we, uh, I think I know what it is. Uh, we need to load the, this. There's a little bit of a change of the sample, but no threat. I can just create a new console application. So this is going to create a new console application that will already uh, load the data the way uh, the the model the way we already should have. Yeah, this is much better. So I'll just quickly do the same thing. Spotify, run this. Of course, need to change the startup project. And what we see here is Leisure. Just ignore this. This is just the the, um, the original field. Let me just remove this. This is just hard coded stuff. Yeah. So Spotify is Leisure. Now, in interest of time, uh, that's all for the demo. If you want to know more about ML.NET Model Builder, uh, here's the link. You can just Google ML.NET Model Builder. Um, if you're interested in uh, doing a uh, for your own data, uh, you can play around with uh, this sample apps for simple transaction tagging. There's even an app, uh, a project on it that allows you to generate mock transaction data. And not just that, it allows you to generate uh, bad data as well. So if you want to play around and see how bad data can impact machine learning and you know play around with the data, see, get a feel for machine learning. And if you want to uh, play around with another project that uh, I have built uh, with help of my company as part of brainstorming, we, we did the prototype literally in 30 minutes and then a whole app in four, uh, four hours. We, what we did is if you know uh, git commits, you need to write um, a message. And we built a classifier where we tried to figure out the right emoji for your commits, which is called Gitmoji. Uh, it's a really uh, fun project, and if you're interested in that, it's a quite nice uh, real-world example where you can just take something, put it in, and just make it work. And with that, thank you. Thank you very much, JK. Yes, thank you. It was really interesting to see how this whole thing works in Visual Studio. Yes, and uh, sorry for the rushing. Usually I have like 45 minutes to 50 minutes <laughs> to talk all about that. Well, we try to give everyone a chance to s speak up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, by talking about speaking up also, um, you're also one of the organizers of the Global AI podcast. Yes. Maybe you can say something about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Funnily enough, we actually have ML.NET uh, team on our podcast. I think it was six months ago, eight months ago, a uh, while ago. And what we're trying to do with our podcast is not only talk about from technical perspective, uh, how AI impacts the developers, but also how it impacts different uh, sectors of our life. For instance, in education, sports, construction, um, AI responsibility, um, and sometimes we do also cool things like uh, actually talking to ML.NET teams, and we're trying to get some other people on board uh, from other uh, Microsoft teams uh, to talk about uh, how they uh, implement AI and how it impacts different uh, people. Okay. Yes, and, and I also seen that you had a really interesting talk about uh, AI and Excel lately. Yes. And uh, yes, um, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, well. when I was in high school, I just did everything Excel. But the interesting thing is, 
you can now use Excel to build machine learning models. Which if is you're great. interested in <laughs> how to learn how to do that, go check out our podcast. It's, uh, it's an interesting uh, video. Yes. All right, JK, thank you very much. Thank you a lot. Enjoy the rest you of your me. evening, right? Uh, almost evening. Afternoon. Almost, almost evening. evening, all right. <laughs> Almost weekend. I don't know. That's still one more day. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for joining. Day. But it's and, uh, Friday at tomorrow, so it'll be exactly. <laughs> thanks for joining, and uh, we'll hear from you soon again. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. And